well has been to combine your social worker education with the fire and rescue service? Well, um, actually it's quite funny because I never thought that I would end at the fire service. Though I, well, I have a social worker background and my approach is a holistic <coughs> perspective and I've worked in private organizations wanted social perspective and new projects, but some kind of, yeah, I don't know. I just never thought I would be in the fire service. And yet here you are. And yet on the stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Nope. Hello everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Maria. I'm the project manager on Brandkedera uh, in Denmark. That's also fire cadets in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, I have a background, yeah, as we just spoke about, a social worker. And um, I'm here to tell you a little about the work that's been done in, in Denmark, in the Bank of Today Denmark. I'll tell you a little about, about the facts, what we do and how we do it. Then I'll show you a little bit, uh, a little film from uh, London Facts' fire, Miss Fire Cadet. And then I'll just try to wrap it all up. So let me see how this is done. Well, the Bank of Today Denmark project is a social project, like uh, Munisa and Alex just told you. Uh, we are a, a social project that started, or, or our aim was to, uh, to stop fire-related crime done by the youth, and our aim was to stop uh, harassment of the firefighters and to get a better relationship between the youth and the firefighters. So what we do that is that we are a nationwide project office. We counsel uh, municipalities and fire services and how to establish fire cadet brigades, how to organize it, how to get fundings, uh, how to get the target groups, and how to create partnerships. We, also, we are also a catalyst for nationwide activities and educational programs. A lot of our firefighters, they aren't uh, instructors, so they don't have the quality or the qualifications to, uh, to educate the young people. So that's why we've uh, developed a two-step uh, educational program for the firefighters, so that they can be, become youth firefighter instructors. So they get the basic skills to educate young people, but also to get skills and qualifications to have um, to work with vulnerable uh, young people, and um, we also uh, we also catalyst for quarterly meetings uh, in whole of Denmark, where we invite every um, project leader or leader on uh, the youth fire brigades to come and uh, have experience based meetings. We also have a two uh, two step educational program for the youth. Uh, where they, when they pass their education in their local fire brigades as fire cadets, they can continue with our young leader program, and after that, they can come uh, become helping instructor program. And at last, we also uh, collect data and make different kind of evaluations. Um, we know that it's very important to show the young people's progress, the vocational progress, and the social progress to get funding from the municipalities and from different other uh, funding uh, collaborators. Uh, but it's a very um, problematic area because we, it's the firefighters who we need to get the data from on the young people and they don't uh, necessarily think that this is meaningful for them because it's meaningful for them to educate the young people, that's where their passion is. And they don't believe that putting the young people in kind of our schedules and making different kind of notes about them, that that's their part of the job. So that's one of the things we're also working for, because if we, if we want to uh, expand the youth fire brigades in Denmark, we need to get some results. We need to, to focus on what the young people get out of it. So... We have about 45 youth fire brigades in, in Denmark. They all work totally different. They, uh, they have the same topics. Uh, they educate this, uh, the young people in like a mini, uh, to, to become mini firefighters, but in very different ways. One of the, one of the things where a project uh, in Denmark is a little bit different is that we uh, work or we focus on our social inclusion. We have this 50-50 split uh, target group where we take in the young people, like we have, uh, if we have a group of 12, 12 young people, um, six of them are, um, are resourceful young people and six of them uh, are vulnerable people. 
or vulnerable youth people, young people. And what kind of uh, challenges do they have? They have either vocational challenges, social challenges, or personal challenges. And compared to the to the vocational challenges, it could be like learning difficulties, like in, include, including understanding and following collective messages and tasks. It could also be things like dyslexia, mathematics disorders. It could be difficulties adapting to the framework of the primary school. We actually see a lot of young people who don't fit in the primary school, who don't fit um, in, the, in the classrooms where they sit eight, eight hours. They, are, they have a lot of energy and they need to get it out. And instead of sitting in the classroom, they're just doing messing around and becoming a disturb, disturbance for, for, the other, for the other kids. And we also have a lot of children that are not ready to proceed with further, edu further education. In, uh, in Denmark, it's like in, in eighth grade, they get this stamp, this mark, whether they are uh, educated, ready for education or not. And a lot of our children, or young people who are in, the, in our uh, youth fight, that's, they have these kind of problems. A lot of our children also have social challenges. It could be difficulties in understanding other people's behavior and how they react to see how their, uh, their reaction patterns are. They have difficulties in yeah, social relationships. They have sometimes inappropriate behavior. It could be antisocial uh, behavior, but it could be yeah, destructive behavior, criminal behavior. A lot of our young people have a lack of adult network. They are pretty much alone. They don't uh, either have uh, friends and have trouble making friends. They have a lack of structure in everyday life. Some of them are, um, are in families with poverty. And well, we also have children or young people who either are bullied or being bullied. And personal challenges. Um, that could be emotional and physical neglect from the parents or families. It could be parents, they have parents with uh, low parenting skills. It could be uh, youngsters with low esteem and self-worth. We have that is a very large group in, in uh, Project Banke uh, today, Denmark. We also have a lot of young people with mental difficulties or disorders. Um, it could be anxiety, HDHD, it could be personality disorders. We have some, well, uh, we have also uh, young people with uh, cutting difficulties and some with suicide thoughts. We also have a lot of young people who, um, who have death or illness in the family or uh, that are hit by divorce or parents who, who don't collaborate uh, or cooperate, uh, cooperate in, in that divorce process. So, it's very important for us to have this 50-50 Split because the resourceful young people are a mirror to the more vulnerable people and vice versa. So it's not only to include the young people who have difficulties, but it's also to include the resourceful young people because, well, in, in Denmark we have this uh, term called curling uh, parents or curling children. That means that, uh, that the parents are doing everything for these young children and when they grow up they actually become citizens who think that the society is made for them and not the other way around. So there's also quite a good learning perspective for the resourceful young people and it's quite good for them to see how other uh, children and how other young people are, are brought up with what kind of difficulties they have. So either way, whether they're the resourceful young people, whether they're the vulnerable young people, the Youth Fire Brigade for them, its structure, its hierarchy, and its predictability, and that's good for every young person. So how do we recruit these young people? How do we uh, make partnerships, and uh, who do we uh, cooperate with? Every youth... Uh, well, I forgot to mention that the film is in Danish, so for those of you who didn't understand, I'm really sorry. I've agreed uh, with the organiz organizers of the conference that the film spoke for itself, so I hope you, yeah, you, you understand that just a little bit. So, just to wrap it up, what's in it for the fire and rescue service? Uh, when I go out to the municipalities and to local fire service departments, everybody's saying to me, but Maria, why should we do this? Especially the fire service, 
this isn't our core service. Why should we do it? We don't have the, uh, the fundings for it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing. We can see the social perspective, but, but why should we do it? Well, there's a lot of benefits from this, and I'm trying sometimes, I, I feel not only as a social worker, but feeling like I'm a social saleswoman, because I'm trying to sell some of these brilliant ideas and benefits from having a youth fire brigade. We have problems in the Danish fire service departments with a generation gap, with voluntariness, and with diversity and social integration. Um, in comparison to the generation gap, a lot of the volunteers and the part-time firefighters in Denmark are middle-aged, maybe 45 and up. Uh, there's about a lack of part-time firefighters and, um, and volunteer firefighters, about 400 is estimated by uh, the Wellscapes Fall Um So here we have a, a potential recruitment channel if we use it correctly. And just like Keely just said, like in, in London, they have really, really a huge, um, a huge uh, component of young people, but they don't use it. We have some kind of the same problem in Denmark. We have the youth fire brigades. Uh, and some youth fire brigades we work focusedly on getting the young people from the youth fire brigade over to the voluntary uh, units or to the uh, part-time uh, firefighters. But I think there's still a gap that we could close. In Stacey Holstein, there is 2.8 inhabitants. In Denmark, we are 5.6. In uh, Sri Holstein, they have about nine and a half thousand youth cadets in Denmark. I'm not quite sure what the number is, but it's much, much lower. Maybe we have a thousand. In Sri Holstein, each year, uh, they have uh, the, these nine and a half thousand is from 10 to 18. Each year, they harvest about 400 new volunteer firefighters each year. And that's only from the, from the young group that are actually 18. So why can't, can't we do the same? 400, that's pretty much, that's pretty much, pretty, uh, yeah, that's a lot, a, a, a good group. In, um, in some parts of the UK that, where they also have youth fire brigades, they actually have uh, the young people on a, wait on a waiting list. They have too many firefighters because of the youth fire brigades. So do we have anywhere in Denmark where we have a waiting list for firefighters? No, we don't. So this is a potentially good, real, realistic recruitment channel if we just focus the resources and the leadership to, to doing this and not just making it a leisure activity. And actually that's just the same for the volunteerness. All the statistics in Denmark says that young people are underrepresented in a as a volunteers. We also have great problems in Denmark with uh, voluntariness because a lot of our organizations are fighting about the, the volunteers. It's really uh, difficult to attract them. They make different campaigns, they, uh, they give them different kind of education and other goods just to attract them. So there's a, a, a great competition about the young people. What we have in the fire and service res in the rescue service is a better opportunities than some of the other organizations because what kind of organizations have the possibility to educate their own young persons to shape them and in the end to actually get labor out of it. So they can, like in situation has they can handpick their own young people to be volunteers, to be part-time uh, uh, firefighters that are already pre-qualified, they are competent, they know the work environment and they know the system. So when they get 18, we don't need to put as many resources to them if they're just somebody coming out from the street and wanting to be a firefighter. Why don't we use that in a better way? Yeah. And the last thing is this diversity and social integration that we talked about. In a project Banquet in Denmark, 23 of the, of the young people are girls. And after a year, after they graduated with the fire cadet education, 24% of the, of the whole group is uh, are, are, are girls. So, yesterday we had this, uh, we had this workshop about um, trying to uh, find a problem we should solve and we should go around in, in different groups and be hunters for, for good ideas. And, uh, 
when I participated in the workshop yesterday, we all had the same problem, how to hire, how to attract uh, females or women to, uh, to the firefighting, to the firefighter, um, to the firefighter units. But we didn't actually found any, um, any solutions. This is one of the solutions, I believe. We have young people, we already have 23% of them who are girls. We don't actually, we don't go around making campaigns for the girls, they just come. They want to do this, but we need to grasp them when they're young, we need to school them, we need to shape them and we need to retain them, we need to be better at retaining them in the, in the youth fire cadets and so they can go further on to the, to the adult uh, firefighting units. So, this is a win-win situation for all, I believe. The fire service, they get hand-packed, shaped, competent, future firefighters. They get potentially more loyal employees they, who has a better uh, understanding of the firefighter environment. They get a better closure of the generation gap and they get a better mix between genders and minorities. Schools, they get more attentive students. Communities or local communities get more mature and responsible citizens. The parents get children back home that are uh, that have a greater focus in life, and the young people themselves, well, they get vocational and social development, they get a boost of self-esteem and self-worth, and they get courage to grasp their future lives. So, I think it's a win-win situation. I hope you do the same. Thank you.